In this video, I'm going to go through with you transformation of functions of the form y equals f of x. Now, there are a few rules which you just need to learn, and to help you understand them, I'm going to go through an example of each one. Firstly, we have the rule here. If, f, if y equals f of x plus a, then you move plus a in the y direction. So what does this mean? Well, if this line here is equal to f of x, then if we make a, so a here, if we make a 3, so a equals 3, so we have f of x plus 3, we will move up three spaces on the grid, but have exactly the same gradient on the line. So this goes through the point 1, so we'll go 2, 3, 4, and we'll have a line of exactly the same gradient, and it looks like Okay, the next rule, if we have f of x plus a, so this time the a is inside the bracket, we move negative a in the y direction. I'm sorry, no we don't. It's the opposite of last time, it's the x direction. I apologise for that. But what's important to note here is that we have positive a in the brackets here, but our movement is actually negative a in the x direction. So, if we had a negative number inside this bracket, we would actually move in the positive direction. So, let's look at an example. If this graph here equals f of x, and we want to find f of x plus 4, which is written up here, we would move negative 4 in the x direction, which looks something like this. You see, we've gone from here, plus 2, to negative 2. So, we've moved negative 4 in the x direction. Now, a way to remember the, uh, the difference between the last example and this one is that y always behaves. So outside the bracket, always behaves, and if it's positive, you go in the positive direction. And x always misbehaves. Uh, so if you're inside the bracket and you're dealing with x, you do the opposite of what it says in the bracket. Now, we'll get to see another example of y behaving here. So here, what if we have a lots of f of x? So your time's in this time. We well, get a stretch in the y, so in the y direction, by a scale factor of a. So what does this mean? Basically, every point on the on every point on the graph to get the uh, its value on the new graph a f of x, we times it by a scale factor of a and leave x alone. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so here we've let a equal two, so we have two f of x. And if you look carefully, we've stretched by a scale factor of 2 in the y direction. But the x value here on all the x values have stayed the same. So any point on the graph before has now doubled in the y direction and stayed the same in the x. And now we get to see another example of x misbehaving. So we have a lots of x in the brackets this time. So the stretch in x is this time by a scale factor of 1 over a. Not a, it's the, it's the opposite of a, but not negative uh, in this case. It is 1 divided by, so the reciprocal of a. So let's have a look at an example. So if this graph here is y equals f of x, then what will happen when we make a equal to 2? So basically I've put this line here, the line of symmetry, just to show you the stretch in the x-axis to make it easier for you. So let's have a look. So here we can see that the graph has shrunk by a factor of 2 in the x-axis. So basically it's been stretched by a factor of half. So in shrunk by a factor of 2 and stretched by half is actually, actually the same thing. So as we can see here, the, uh, the bottom of the graph is still on the line of symmetry. So we haven't moved it or translated it, but we have stretched it in the x by a scale factor of a half. Because this point here, the top point, and this point here were both three units away from the uh, line of symmetry as before, and now they're one and a half. So we've actually halved uh, the, actual, the actual distance in the x-axis. Okay, finally we come on to negatives. Now, in negatives, both x and y misbehave. So, here we have negative f of x. And we find that is a reflection in the x-axis. So whereas in everything else, 
a something outside of a bracket is in the y, we find that this time it is in the x-axis. So that means that the x-axis here is the line of symmetry. And we'll get a graph as Okay, so here, com here we can see that we have actually reflected this graph here in the x-axis to get negative f of x. And finally, we have a reflection in the y-axis, which is f of minus x, as we probably expected from the last example. So that will give you an, a graph which looks like this. Okay, so here we have reflected the graph f of x in the y-axis, which means we get the mirror image here. So the line of symmetry was this line here, which is the y-axis. And these are all the rules that you are expected to know for GCSE.